It is June 7th, Wednesday, 2017, and it is day 139 in the Donald Trump White House regime. Today, Donald Trump picks a Nazi hunter, Christopher Wray, to head the FBI. He should have no problem at all getting through Congress. Matter of fact, all the congressmen probably already got the memo from BB. Everything's A-OK. -okay. Let him through. Donald Trump is taunting Iran. Yes, if we look over the top stories today, Donald Trump says that Iran deserved it. They have no one to blame but themselves, as Donald Trump taunts Iran. Funny how he goes into this. His whole agenda happening right after talking to the Saudis. After bowing down to the king, I think they went over their battle plan, their strategy plan. We'll get into that later. It is very alarming. So that is the big story today. Persia is attacked by ISIS. But first, a special word from our Muslim sponsors. Okay, we're back to the main story. In Persia, 12 are dead. ISIS has struck. What does Donald Trump think about ISIS? I mean, I think on the campaign trail, he was talking about ISIS on the campaign trail. Totally different agenda. Totally different agenda now that it's actually happened. I don't have to tell you who's responsible for this stuff. Well, I hope I don't have to tell you. America has fallen. We have been taken over. America's government has been compromised. And the Revolutionary Guard has, will blame many people. But again, I hope I don't have to explain to all the Americans who's responsible for this type of behavior. So we'll just go on down here and see what... Yes, they're just making a bad situation worse. I think we've been doing that now for 16 years. That's probably the... The moral of today's story, making a bad situation worse for 16 years. And don't think the people of Persia don't know who to blame. I mean, the people in Persia, they've got a long, long standing history. I mean, they're not stupid. They're not all that stupid. They don't watch the Kardashians. I mean, that's a plus. I mean, if you don't have the Kardashians on, that's a plus. I'm sure it's hard to get uh, antidepressants and pain pills over there, too. But... But what do we dumb Americans know? Anyhow, Texas Democrat Rep Representative Al Green, he has started the process. We talked about that yesterday. Representative Sherman is joining him, and they're going to try to impeach Donald Trump. Doesn't seem to be getting a whole lot of mainstream media attention, so this probably tells me it's just a test run. You know, they do that in the government. They go through test runs, maybe one or two. See how the public... Uh, takes it, you know, do they have an appetite for it? These politicians are really weak and pathetic. I mean, they don't have a backbone in their, in their whole body. They don't, have a, they don't have a bone in their whole body. I think they're like they're fish flapping around out there in the, uh, on the land just waiting for instructions for BB. They can't do anything properly without instructions from the deep state BB. So this is a test run. Like I said, it's just a test run. They're going to see how the public takes it. Uh, a lot of polls, I don't know if you can believe the polls, but they have polls out there that say more people want him impeached than are supporting him. I don't know. Do a Google on Donald Trump, and you get about 354 million results today in 0.72 seconds. The big story is James Comey went nuclear. Well, we know we've been hearing about the big James Comey story for all week, haven't we? We discussed that yesterday. We already know why they're pushing James Comey down our throat every day. <laughs> Unbelievable, these people. And then it'll, it'll get worse tomorrow, but that's the circus we live in. Donald Trump understands how important Ohio is. I, I don't know if Donald Trump really wants to get reelected, you see, but nobody ever gets elected the President of the United States without the support of Ohio. Middle America has to support the man. It's a popularity contest. And if the Buckeyes don't like you, you don't really have a good chance to be president or re-elected. Donald Trump knows that. But I tell you, Alan Dershowitz, you talk about, you talk about a piece of dog shit. 
Uh, um, but Alan, you know you're in bad company if Alan Dershowitz is supporting you. Donald Trump should just send these people memos. Please, don't say anything about me, Alan. Go back into retirement. So now we're off to the next big story in the Washington, D.C. swamp. Donald Trump picks Christopher Ray. Now you know it's bad. You know it's bad when people have to make a statement like that. I mean, Donald Trump picks a non-Jew for government. I mean, everybody expects you. I mean, we've talked, we've been all through Donald Trump's cabinet, all his picks. I mean, you know it's bad when that, that's the title. <laughs> that's, what's the good news? There has to be some good news about Christopher Ray. The good news is I think he worked for um, Chris Christie. So that means that he probably doesn't have a high regard for Jared Kushner. So the only good news I have on this pick is that he's connected with Chris Christie and he probably has Jared Kushner low in re low regards. He probably doesn't like the Kushner family at all, but I'm just I'm just guessing or we're speculating. Of course, the big news is that um He's going to go through Congress and Senate with flying colors because he is known, he is known as the Nazi hunter. He really, it gets better every day. You, you really can't make it. I could not even ask Donald Trump for more material to write on. If I, if I were to write it down and send it to Donald Trump, I probably couldn't get better material to report on. Not, he picks a Nazi hunter to be the head of the FBI. I'm okay. Lifelong hunter. And it says it was it there could be hundreds. I didn't know this. There could literally be hundreds of 90-year-old Germans out there in your neighborhood. They're dangerous. These what is it, 95, 96-year-old German in your neighborhood. I mean he might just knock you over the head with his cane if he can get out of bed. Christopher Ray worked for the uh, King and Spalding law firm in the swamp. Donald Trump, uh, the most important thing for Donald Trump is you have to, your, your face has to be attractive. Donald Trump likes to go with people who have symmetrical faces, they're attractive. Donald Trump is a reality TV show host or actor. Donald Trump really puts a lot into what do you look like. That's why I was surprised when he hired Session. That was, I was really hired, I was, I was surprised when he, picked session because he doesn't fit that Hollywood mode. Now, Jared Kushner, he fits the mode perfectly. The only problem is the more people find out about this guy, the more they don't like him. It kind of works with, you know, people, criminals who take government subsidies and build highway, high, high rises. That was the money was supposed to go to the poor people. Bannon, 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 Bannon. That fake news keeps on going on. They really want to spread this false narrative. We talk about that at the end of the video. I go into this in detail. This, what you're seeing here, trying to make Bannon a white supremacist. I go into detail in that at the end of the video with a, a story on Richard Spencer. But uh, I think this is going to come back to bite Donald Trump in the butt. I mean, they're admitting that his official, his tweets are official statements. I have a funny feeling that's going to come back to haunt them for some reason. I don't know. Here's an interesting story that uh, Melania and the kid, they're going to move into the White House, you know, I guess because school is over. So they'll be in the, uh, living in the White House for at least, well, probably three months, a couple months at least. So we're just going to go down looking for some miscellaneous news today. Comey's statement, this Comey claims that Donald Trump told him, I need loyalty, I need loyalty, are you going to give it to me? Get the hell out of here. They're going to make a big deal about that. It's all a diversion. I'll probably talk more about that tomorrow, the big Comey diversion. And on to what probably most definitely has to be the most funniest news of today. Uh, an eighth grader said, uh, no thanks, Mr. Ryan. I think I'll skip this photo session. Um, we're not brainwashed here. Okay, this is a special school. My daddy told me who you are. <laughs> That's got to be the funniest story of the day. It's, uh, you know, I think, I think yesterday I was saying, hey, I, I, didn't, I was not very optimistic about these kids today. Maybe it's the, the really, really young generation, the, the five to nine-year-olds that we have to count on. Okay. This, now, this is actually a big story. I'm going to have to report on this in detail. 
Why does Donald Trump abruptly turn on Qatar? This is so troubling. I mean, because what we know here is uh, what Donald Trump did over in Saudi Arabia. They planned this all out over in Saudi Arabia. That's what the tour. That's what the tour was about. It was a war tour. Just in case there's somebody out there who doesn't know where Qatar is, Qatar, right here. Now that's probably got to be less than 200 miles from Persia, right there. <clears throat> 200 miles from Persia. Here's the thing. You know this was all planned out, all planned out, probably months in advance before he, before Donald Trump even went to Saudi Arabia. They were working on this. Now what they're going to do is have warships scattered all through here. Now, you see how close these warships are going to be to Persia? I mean, come on. Literally, a fifth grader could figure this out. And it's sad. It's sad that we have to keep on meddling. I mean, with no jobs over here. Did I mention that there was this big, huge factory that broke ground in South Carolina that could put 10,000 deplorables to work? Did I mention that? No, and you know why I didn't mention it. Matter of fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to report on. As Donald Trump was working on his big Saudi Arabia Qatar expedition, what I can tell you, that today there was a fuel plant in South Carolina that shut down. They make fuel pumps. Talking about oil and fuel plant down there in South Carolina. They make fuel pumps. 350 people lost their job today in South Carolina as Donald Trump touches the glowing orb and he's going to teach Qatar a lesson. Unbelievable, these politicians. They think we're stupid. They literally think we're stupid as they try to connect a flashpoint. I mean, this is going to, this is, this is going to end badly. I don't know who these people think they are messing with Persia. This isn't guerrilla fighters hiding up in the Afghanistan mountains. No, this is a whole different hot war. And we got some other big bully in there, Putin, to worry about. I mean, a whole different hot war. Maybe, I just, okay, maybe I'll give Trump this. Maybe he wants America to collapse faster so we can rebuild out of the ashes. Okay, that's, I'll give him that much. Meet Jamie Gorelick. Matter of fact, no, you don't want to get within a thousand yards of this creature. Trust me. Do some research on Jamie, J Jamie Gorelick, and you won't even want to be in the same block as her, let alone in the same building. But she most definitely can help you if you're in the, if you're in the deep state, if you're in the swamp. She may be able to help you. This is kind of weird. A fish walking along the bottom of the ocean floor. The scientists are scratching their heads as we're thinking about going to Mars. As Elon Musk says we're going to go to Mars, we don't even know the creatures at the bottom of the ocean. These people, huh? What else? Well, let's just go down here and look for miscellaneous news. This is the most troubling news. We, we, we reported on this yesterday that the young girl urged on her friend to kill, but we didn't know it was her boyfriend. He said, it's time, babe. It's time, babe. We didn't know it was her boyfriend. I mean, that's just evil. I'm at, uh, there's a certain age group that I have totally lost hope in, and I'm not going to talk about what age it is, but it goes pretty high. Okay, now, before we mention this, U.S. bombs Iranian Militia. I forgot something back here. I think it's. I think we need to go back to this because it's important. I, I forgot to tell you guys that today is National Chocolate Ice Cream Day. Oh, now why is that so important? Well, you know how Donald Trump is when he gets around chocolate, so I almost missed that one. You see, here's the thing. At this point in the game, the only thing we can do is take up a petition, and we got to make sure that all the chocolate is taken out of the White House. That's the only way that the world is going to be safe. We've got to get that chocolate out of the hands of that maniac. Shoot. Fatal beating happens in Texas, Denny's parking lot. It looks like a deputy. A deputy killed a guy outside of Denny's. I mean, these, the police officers are judge, jury, and executioner, and we have to change that. If there's anything in America we have to change, somehow we have to change that, and we have to stop worrying about Qatar. I'm sure Persia can take care of themselves if we stop meddling in the region.
We need to stop. We need to start focusing on America and the problems that we have in America because we have a lot of problems. Seriously, let these people battle it out. I don't give a shit about them. Let them battle it out, and the strongest will survive. I'll leave you with a Bravo von Mueller story I had on my other channel about Richard Spencer. Because it's all a lie. We've been lied to. Not only overseas are we being lied about, but we're being lied here domestically, too. So I'm going to leave you with a video on my thoughts about the fake Richard Spencer. And it's amazing how easy it is to manipulate the American public and uh, I'm sure a lot of the snowflakes don't care but it's worse than that they they will not even do an investigation whatever mainstream media tells them they'll probably believe it we really have to dig in and investigate all these people out there that are thrown down our face so again I'll leave you with what I found on Richard Spencer and it's not good not good at all so thank you very much it looks like Auburn has just canceled uh, Richard Spencer's speech in the last 24 hours. So I guess it's about time we talked about Richard Spencer. Now we could talk about this man for hours, but I'm not. I'm going to try to go through this as quick as humanly possible. That means we're just going to go over the facts. What do we know? We know that Richard came to prominence when Donald Trump came up. We know that this movement that they've hijacked goes back to the Ron Paul movement. So how do you hijack these movements? Through the Federal Reserve banking note, through money. What I'm here to tell you, that most all conservative movements are destined to fail. It looks like Richard Spencer is a mole, he's a plant, he's a shell. And I'm just going to go over some of the facts. But I have come to the conclusion that most of these conservative mo movements are designed to fail from the start, all because they have they are fina financed with Zion money, they are financed with Zion technology, Zion theory, ideas. They are designed to fail right from the start. Now, who is this guy here? It is Paul Gottfried. Now, he is the mentor to Richard Spencer. You don't think that Mr. Gottfried understands how the 1917 revolution in Russia worked. They're using the same playbook, the same M.O. that they used to overthrow the Tsar in Russia in 1917. They're using the same playbook today. It's funny how history repeats itself. It is so, so strange to me. So here's Richard Spencer's mentor. His name is Paul Gottfried. Now, obviously, they're trying to make their distance today because it doesn't look very good. I believe he's sitting here with Marcus Epstein. What am I trying to do? I'm going to just show you the facts today, some things that are not out there. They want you to believe that Richard Spencer is a Nazi, a white supremacist. I believe it's all a cover story. Now, Taki is the man above him there, Taki uh, put him to work in a magazine, the Taki magazine, or Taki, 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 I really don't care. All I know about Taki, the Greek, is he has lived a charmed life of money and power, and he fancies himself the charmer who can talk to the lower class American, but only for short burst. He cannot handle being around us poor people for too long before he has to get back to the cocktail parties of New York. There's money there, there's power there. Spencer is involved with that. I'll say one thing about that. It's funny how these people in power, Donald Trump, Taki, they only hire people who are already in the upper class, the rich people. See, what I'm going to get to at the end of the story, that Richard Spencer actually comes from a rich cotton farmer family. He's a cot he comes from cotton money. They made their money off the backs of black people. This is, And then if you notice how Donald Trump Everybody in his administration is rich. This is to keep you and I out. They don't want you and I, the poor, poor person, to find out the secrets, that it's all a game. It's not a game about race against race. This is a game against rich against poor. And I'm going to try to expose it here. I'm going to try to show some evidence. Paul Godfrey is Spencer's former mentor. This is a Jewish academic who lives in a, a Masonic town.
So briefly, we'll talk about the Freemasons. Uh, a lot of people don't trust me because in the past I have uh, built up Pat Buchanan. I have put Pat Buchanan on a pedestal. But I was only trying to reach out to Mr. Buchanan because he was from the same area I was from, from the Ohio River. He was from Pittsburgh. I'm on the other side, on the Ohio side. And I thought that maybe Pat Buchanan, being one of us, would reach out and try to help his fellow Americans. But I found out that Pat Buchanan is in on it. He's a Mason. And he doesn't want to help us poor people. He doesn't want to help the people of the Ohio Valley or Pittsburgh. No, as you can see from the pictures here, Pat Buchanan is in on it. He's standing right there beside Paul Gottfried, and there's Richard Spencer. And, of course, they have a connection to Tacky or Taki, the New York socialite. Uh, it's, it's sick. It's Masonic. It uh, goes back to... It goes, but we're, not, we're trying to stay to the facts here. I'm just, the facts are that this is the mentor to Richard Spencer. The so-called white supremacist has a Jewish professor in academia, planting the seeds in his mind. Now, I'm going to get to a point where they're trying to make their distance. They're trying to make their distance, but I know it's all cover story. And what is a cover story? It's basically a lie, isn't it? A fraud. They're trying to fool people into thinking that uh, Spencer is a white supremacist. In reality, he is not. You see, I kind of find this argument funny here. They're trying to push this white supremacy argument. I find it funny as China has all the factories, Asia is showing their superiority in just about everything but violent sports. Oh, so that brings us to a good point. The Caucasians, you see, I don't like it when these people bring up the term white. We've known that. I, I've expressed that many times because white is a lie. White is a fraud. There are no white people. But Caucasian people are good at one thing. Violence. Okay, see, Caucasians are pretty smart, but they're not as smart as the Asians. So this white supremacy thing is all a complete lie. It's all to cause trouble. We've talked about this before. So, like I said, I find this argument of white supremacy so funny now that China has all the factories, China is rising to the empire, and these people still want to force this false agenda of white supremacy. You know what it comes down to? What are Caucasians good at? Violence. When we came from Europe, we came to the new world and we took it over by violence. We are extremely violent people and we happen to be halfway clever. That is a deadly, lethal mix. You see, that's, that's where we outdo the Asians. The Asians are smarter than us, but they're not as violent as us. So I'm just trying to take that white supremacy thing and throw it out the door because that's the wrong agenda. That's an agenda that's going to get us in trouble because it's false. It's not true. So there I go again. I said I was going to try to make it quick, and I go off on a tangent. But I do believe it's important. We need to bring up the truth more often. Let's get back to Paul Gottfried. Now, remember, he's the mentor of um, Spencer. Now, it's kind of, I found it interesting that this is, the alt-right is not the first conservative movement that he's been involved in. He was involved in this other movement back in 1986 the paleo-conservative movement. So, I mean, he's been planting seeds into young people's minds for a long time. He's in academia, and it's not a coincidence that he's Jewish. This is not, none of this is a coincidence. So, um, but this goes into my theory that all these movements are designed to fail because of who is backing them, who is behind them. It's not an American movement. All these conservative movements fail because it's not a grassroots American movement from the Ohio River, from the plains of Kansas, down from Alabama. No, it's born in some New York or Boston academia mind. It's doomed to fail from the beginning, and maybe they even design it that way. They just want to get your hopes up, and then they crush you. Richard Spencer is going to crush your hopes. Let's go in. To, let's find some more. We're, look, we're just looking for the facts today. Does Richard Spencer bring up that he is um, involved with this? No. They try now. They're trying to make a distance. This part here tells you here that they're trying to distance themselves, but they just co-edited a book two years ago. So they are trying to they are trying to 
put the cover story out there, the illusion that they're making their different, they're making their separate way, they're going their separate ways because it looks bad. When you have a Jewish academia professor backing up a white supremacist, it doesn't look good. It just exposes the lie. Now we're going to dig deeper. Now it's where it's, where it's really going to get good. Of course, he does his summers in Europe because he comes from a rich family. Cotton money. Yeah, they come from cotton money. So he can take a plane. He can take a jet from Montana to New York to Louisiana to Boston. He can jet set all over the place. He's in that tacky crowd. He's got cotton money. The Dickenhurst family. Uh, it, this has signs all over. Oh, he, it has signs all over it that this guy's a plant, a shill. The worst part of the story is their family is getting government subsidies. That's probably why I'm making this video. If I didn't learn this, I would have not even bothered getting into this. When I found out that their family made money off the backs of black folk way back when, but now they're actually making money off the taxpayer through the federal government and subsidies. Look at these payments. Look at these payments. That's what inspired me to make the video. See, I don't care if you're a rich cotton farmer. I don't care what you're doing in Montana or Boston. I really don't give a shit. But when you're taking taxpayer money and then you're saying lies and you're trying to set an agenda out there that's false... Then it gets on my nerves. I mean, look, look at the money. You cannot deny. And, he, and they never want to talk about this. I guarantee you. You ask him about how much money they're getting from the federal government, which is coming from you and I. You see, you and I are paying these people their, for their farms. You see, they no longer have the black people out there picking cotton. It's not that easy anymore. It's not that easy to be a farmer anymore. So now they have to take money from the taxpayer. They need federal subsidies. You and I are paying those federal subsidies as they sell. And then when they get tired of planting cotton, they sell the acreage for millions of dollars to build a track home division where they can keep track of you like in a little ghetto. This gets, I mean, every way you look at this, this is rich against poor. And that's what they don't want you to know, that the rich people, why Donald Trump, everybody Donald Trump has hired has been extremely rich. Is it a coincidence that now Spencer cotton money? We now know that why Spencer is pushing Trump. He comes from rich cotton money. Breitbart formed in Israel. I mean, unbelievable. The Spencer family farms are headquartered in a $3 million home in Montana, where I basically think he lives in Montana. Anytime he wants to come to New York or Washington, D.C. to set the fake agenda, he comes. And So now we're just going to take it a little step farther. I believe they're also involved with the Mercer family. Surprise, surprise, surprise. I mean, another rich billionaire family who may be cryptic. Unbelievable. So what do we got here? We've got Trump hiring the rich people. Breitbart formed in Israel. Spencer, rich cotton family. Involved with Mercer, billionaire Mercer, who may be cryptic. Uh, they definitely don't reach out to real Americans like you and I. I mean, remember what this Breitbart agenda is. Steve Bannon being another fraud. Steve Bannon being pushed up there as a nationalist. He only cares about you and I as he's surrounded by these people. You see, I don't care what you say. I'm looking at what you do. I'll repeat that. I don't care what Donald Trump and Steve Bannon says. I'm going to watch what they do. And all I see them doing is bowing down to Saudi kings, pissing on a crying wall overseas. I mean, I don't see them doing anything on the Ohio River. This is a warning. All I'm putting that out is a warning. This man is taking money from you and I. His family is taking government subsidies from taxpayers to keep their farm rolling so they can have a $3 million estate in Montana. Spencer could be, I mean, uh, it's, it is funny to me that all these names do connect together. Obviously, we don't have time to go into the Spencer name, the Trump name, the, uh, all these names. I mean, you could, you could talk for weeks on these names. But he went to a, a good school, a good school of color, had lots of famous Jewish alumni. I mean, this man, what they're representing him to be is a false, 
cover story, the same as what they're representing Steve Bannon to be is a false cover story. We're being lied to. And that's what I, that's all this video, that's all I want to get across, is we're being lied to. Just about everything they want you to believe about Steve Bannon is a lie. Everything they want you to believe about Richard Spencer is a lie. Probably everything is a lie. You dig, you dig into these people. Tacky, the Greek socialite in New York, drinking cocktails, and he thinks he knows about the Ohio River hillbilly. He talks about the Ohio River hillbilly. He don't know nothing about the Ohio R Valley hillbilly, the Appalachian hillbilly. He knows nothing about us. People make me sick. Spencer's wife, does she look like somebody who would be with a white supremacist? Look at her. Does she look like she would be from some white supremacist guy down from Arkansas? No. We're being lied to, aren't we? I believe pretty much their agenda going forward is always going to be cryptic now. Now that everybody knows, everybody's starting to get an idea of what's happening, they're going to go really, really cryptic on us. It's going to be more and more difficult to expose these people. Right now, it's very easy for me to show you the facts. It's easy now, but in the future, trust me. Dig as deep as you can because they are going to go cryptic, double, triple, overtime on you. You're going to have to do a lot of research.